So, uh, yeah, hi guys, welcome. We're episode 34 now uh, on the Grapples Academy podcast. Um, I say still, still in lockdown in the UK. No sign of training anytime soon. But I think there's been a few comps in America, aren't there? Like, I think they're still fairly open back up. Yeah, it seems like America's pretty much just going ahead with everything as normal. Which is yeah. One of you looking and just seeing uh, training going ahead as normal at all the big gyms uh, and all the comps are going ahead as normal. A bit frustrating, but at least it gives us a little bit to keep our eyes on and uh, keep the keep the interest in jiu-jitsu going. Yeah, definitely. Slightly jealous though with it all as well, like seeing all the training videos. Possibly, it's like there's nothing I want to do more now than get on a mat with like 50 sweaty dudes and just choke each other. As well as train jiu jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I remember uh, some of the some of the open mats at Stealth or down at ASW, for example, where he's like, oh, got to be over 100 guys on the mats and you can't see anything for the amount of steam that's on the yeah. mats. And, uh, just, a, just a mad atmosphere to be rolling in. Um, not it's often get... like that in the UK, is it? No, it's not. No, it's quite a quite a rare occurrence. But like Sam's done quite a good job with those open mats before yeah. before we uh, got shut down. Uh, I, I didn't manage to make one, unfortunately. But yeah, the uh, looking at the images and the videos look like a like probably one of the better open mats I've seen from the UK. Yeah, it's great. There's loads of loads of bodies on the mat, loads of decent high level guys as well. Um, just everyone's bumping into everybody, completely unsafe. Like the floor's just sweaty as hell. Um, basically, like doing jujitsu, like take away floor, uh, take away floor. <laughs> so not much wrestling going on. Lots of uh, lots of starting from the knees. And lots of yeah. Opening. Like loads of really good quality matches with the with the, uh, good quality rounds with the quality of the guys that are there. So good stuff. Looking forward to getting back to that. I say miss the miss the uh, days where it's like trying to get a foot in on the mat and then just slipping just because you can't get any grip anywhere. Trying to put a submission on and losing it due to lack of friction, having to really like increase yeah, your mean, choking game because of it. I just use that as a as an opportunity to uh, slick my way out of some submissions. That I've got to <laughs> Afterwards, just when when they don't get it right, mate, it's just because I was slippy. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, yeah. Not a good environment for trying any flying stuff. You try and take a run up for a flying triangle or a flying armbar, and you can guarantee you're going to be on your backside before you end up getting anywhere close to him. Yeah, or like like we were speaking off before we start recording, uh, Josh Inger to dinners where he went for a was I think a flying armbar or a flying triangle. Then he shoved him off, and he just ended up landing flat on his back, dazed and winded himself. <laughs> I think there's more examples of people trying to do flying triangles or arm bars where they don't work than when yeah. they work. I don't know why people try them. No, like, especially not in, I think if you're, I'd say eight kilos or heavier, flying techniques aren't made for your body type. I just want to try and find a quick video, actually. There's, um, in Tyrese pulled off on Shane Curtis. Yeah. Yeah. That was a very nice one as well, the one that he managed to pull off. Yeah, that was funny, that, because I'd um, seen the video afterwards hey. as well. But Shane just knows that it was funny that it happened, and he's, he's having a bit of a chuckle, even though you can see that he's probably pissed off that he got caught with it. But <laughs> then they got the opportunity to have the, the rematch at um, Empire Grappling, which was a good match. Yeah. And there's, uh, there's that one recently from um, that, that armbar that I was showing you before, off, uh, before we started recording. See if I can get the uh, video up. If you were to pull off any flying uh, submission in a, in a tournament as like a highlight or a picture, what one would it be? Uh, I think the only flying submission I've been involved in is when I got caught in a flying triangle at my first Euros. Mm. <laughs> in, uh, I think one of the most impressive ones of recent memory was um, Gary Tonin with that flying heel hook. Yeah. That was quality. Yeah. And like he just he just pulls it out of nowhere as well. Like there's zero fear in him. Just jumps on the submission and takes the limb. Amazing watching it back though. You can see the setup. See see him like getting him heavy on the leg and then yeah, just a slick finish. Yeah. 
Interesting as well, because that's like not really one that you practice too much in the gym, just with the risk of like landing heavy on the leg. And probably one that you get told by your coach, like, you know, avoid doing that on your training partners if you can. But you need to practice it if you're going to pull it off in competition. Well, yeah. I've, I've, I've seen it in competition where someone's gone for one and um, they've ended up blowing the guy's knee out by jumping on the guy, jumping on his knee. I think it was, um, was it Tanko? Do you remember the Tanko card that was in Manchester? No, yeah, I think there was um, a flying um, scissor takedown from there. And the guys need, I just, just heard this, I think it was the, the Yelp during the uh, round. I've seen, uh, I've seen Shane pull one of those off on role models as well, like in the first 20 seconds of the match. <laughs> <laughs> one second, I've just got to pause this for a sec. Uh, sorry about the uh, dog was going a bit mad around the house then. <laughs> <laughs> All I could hear was like footsteps pattering over there and loads of noise, and I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't hear you properly. <laughs> uh, that video. Ah, yes, yeah, the video. Yeah, so let's see if you can put it to the camera. The guys picked him up for an armbar. Like, apparently, he got done for a slam for that, but I don't see the slam. I like. Obviously, the guy lifting up in the air and he's shook him off and trying to get him off. But like, like we were saying before, it's like the Nama Yunus thing. If if you're gonna hold on to a submission like that, you you kind of put yourself at risk. Like if you get if you're lifting off the floor and you're that weight, you 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 let go. <laughs> I mean, with that video in particular, it's difficult for the ref to make a decision on the spot there because the guy's clearly knocked out. But um, there's no, like, downward force from the guy sh um, shooking him off on the armbar. You know, he's not following him down. He's not trying to bring his weight down on him. The guy falls off. He gets knocked out and he's immediately like, shit, you know, I didn't mean to do that. Um, you've got to be careful with flying stuff. I mean, kind of goes back to the argument of street jiu-jitsu versus sport jiu-jitsu doesn't it yeah um, I don't think anybody would be trying that when they're hanging like six feet above the concrete um, no no <laughs> and if they are like I say if, you, if you're going to hold on to that and you're on the concrete you, you're kind of asking to almost be slammed down yeah I mean it kind of almost brings back like the effectiveness of judo um, when put into the proper context of, of getting your head driven through the pavement yeah <laughs> I say judo is the old art of hitting somebody with the floor rather than hitting the floor with somebody. Getting put on your head. Ref is going to put you on your foot. Judo guys are going to put you on your head. Mm. But um, yeah, speaking of that, like because we've got hopefully should be a few competitions coming up fairly soon um, when things start opening up, and we we're sort of talking about like the importance of searching out good training partners um because like no matter how good your gym is you're never gonna get like the everybody that you need to train with um but there's the the old saying like oh, the creonche thing of you can't go train somewhere else because um you know you're gonna you're gonna give away the gym secrets and there's a there's a degree of like where I'm like okay if you've got a teammate facing somebody from another gym like just hold off from training there for a little while until till everything's sort of over with but I'm not of the honest I'm not of the belief that you shouldn't train at other gyms I obviously have your main coach and your main set of training partners but at the end of the day to get better at something you need to broaden your horizons and get as much experience out everywhere you can. Yeah, I'm, just from personal experience, and you could probably attest to this as well, we're pretty lucky up in Manchester with uh, the gyms that we've got and the attitude of the gym owners as well. Um, everyone's quite welcoming. Uh, you know, anyone's happy for you to come down to open mats or to the classes of one-off, probably because almost everybody knows each other as well. All the coaches know each other and pretty much seem to get, a well, uh, get along well enough. 
and then that just kind of filters down to the students, isn't it? I don't think there's any bad, bad attitudes uh, towards anybody in, in Manchester, so that opens up a lot more opportunity for us. Uh, yeah. And for, um, in other areas of the country as well. Uh, but like with the open mats at Stealth that Sam, uh, Sam organises, that brings people up from further down south as well. Uh, you know, guys coming up from Nottingham, coming over from Yorkshire, um, even like the likes of like Ross Nichols coming up from uh, Wales. Uh, like you've got, you, was it Wales? Is, is it London based now, or is it a bit between both? It's uh, kind of like seems to be Wales and, and London, doesn't it? Because that was a lot of the early days cards of Polaris. Basically, seemed to be a lot of Welsh fighters. Yeah, because uh, it was all based down there, like Bristol way, and that that wasn't it. So no, definitely. Like I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we, like. We can almost both credit like a good good amount of development and even like just developing sort of relationships with the people in the gym, um, having the extra training partners and having the freedom to go and train with people who have a different outlook on grappling to you is going to be a massive sort of positive um, for development in the gym. Well, if you're thinking about it from like a competition point of view, if you're looking at it from, I don't want to go and train at other gyms because I'm going to face this guy in a competition. The likelihood is that you're going to be facing those guys if you compete in three or four times a year at a minimum anyway. The guys in your weight class who are going to be competing in your region. Um, so why not train with them? Like if you're competing that often, there's not really any secrets. Um, you're only going to get better and the roles are probably actually going to be more exciting and more entertaining to watch if you are training together more frequently. Like mm. you can do in gamesmanship and hold back your A game and you can make those sort of arguments with that and not show your uh, top techniques and try and reserve those for on the day in competition. But, you know, you're competing against those guys for the reason uh, reason because uh, they're the best. So why yeah. not go confirm them? Classic example of it is um, on a more international scene is like Craig Jones, basically yeah. a similar um, into the Danaher Death Squad, isn't it? It's like, you know, one's main competition. Those guys realise that you're a good attribute to the team and then starts coming in as a main training partner. Oh, definitely. And like I said, it just builds relationships between the gyms. Like, you can develop a, a strong scene without having to keep your mat exclusive to your members. Yeah. Like, because I've, I've been part of a gym where it was frowned upon to go and train elsewhere and you were almost kind of scared to let your coach know that you that you'd went that you'd gone there to train whereas whatever you learn at this other mat or this other gym you're going to bring back to your own mat and the rest of your teammates are going to benefit from it and that's as bare minimum yeah no it's um, it's an interesting idea isn't it i think um probably with MMA as well. You could probably make more of an argument that there's more of that sort of attitude in the MMA community as well. Um, not, there's less competitions throughout the year and there's more likelihood that that cross-training is going to interfere with the uh, performing competition. Um, Jiu-Jitsu, I don't think it's necessarily like that, just with the nature of the sport and the amount of times that, you, that, that the, the guys are competing throughout the year as well and the way that the tournaments are set up. Um, so... I don't know. I've, personally, I've never been. Um, my coach Matt has uh, always been quite open about, you know, being able to go and train at other gyms. Uh, but again, that's because he's got a good relationship with all of the coaches in the area as well. So, um, you know, there's no negative feelings between anybody between the gyms and, like I said before, that filters down to the students as well. Um, I think it'd be weird if there was. I don't know. Sometimes, like. You, if you ever been to an open mat where, or you've been to a class, let's say, for example, where there's not a load of guys there who are coming for an open mat and you might be like the one only guy who's new into the gym. Have you ever experienced like a bit of like, who's, who's this guy and what's he doing here sort of attitude? Um, i trying to think. Yeah, once, but it's more when I've um, like trained overseas. So if I've been on a holiday somewhere and there's been a gym that I wanted to train at, it's more, it's been a case of who's this guy here? Oh, he's from the, he's from the UK. Right, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and put it on him. Because I remember when I was in Iceland for a holiday with my family 
and we were in Reykjavik and went to Milner, um, Gunny's gym, and turned up to the class, and everyone was really, really friendly. Um, and at start, nobody really knew what pace or what intensity to put on me. So I was just being really polite and just sort of working at their level because it wasn't the busiest of classes. I think it might have just been one of their more introductory classes. But then towards the end of the rolling rounds, I think a couple of their black belts turned up and I managed to get some really good rounds in with those. Um, yeah, but at the start, everyone was a bit like, oh, this guy's here, we need to sort of, who is he? And do we need to sort of carry him a little bit? And then once he sort of realised that I was pretty game and pretty adept at what I do, they put their levels up and then that, and then they sort of like started to really test me and push the pace. Um, and it's the same as happened when I've been like anywhere else to train outside of Manchester where I've not been as like known amongst the scene. No, it's good. I mean, like, you know, that's another amazing thing about the sport is that you can go all across the globe. I know you've been like you trained in Japan as well. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that was the interesting one. <laughs> um, uh, you know, and have a bit of fun. Yeah, I remember uh, like the Japan one I turned up there, and pretty much like the the coach turned up like towards after after the sort of the technique part, I and mean, I think there was about an hour and a half of rolling afterwards. And um, essentially, I managed to roll with. The, I think we did about thirty minutes with, with the coach there. Really good, like technical rounds. He's a like really technical guy, had beautiful armbar entries, and then uh, ended up rolling with every single member of the of the gym. And then at the very end, their competitive black belt wasn't rolling. But then after I had about an hour, hour and twenty of rolling, he asked me for a round, and then they filmed that round as well. I was kind of like, "Hang on, you've let me roll for an over an hour at pretty full intensity, and then you." competitive black belts and sat there just sort of watching and then decides to come and have a round. <laughs> screwed up, am I? <laughs> yeah. Kind of felt like I got stitched up with that, to be fair, but uh, it was... What's that? You a flying triangle, on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had the, uh, yeah. the dexterity in my legs and the, the, jump, the jumping height to be able to do that, to be fair. <laughs> I mean, on a, on a more serious note now, like, what are the, the, the less experienced guys out there, what's the, what are the benefits of going to have Matt? Because I think there, there might be, and you probably had this conversation with people as well before, they, they might be a bit intimidated about going to an open map where you know, the level of the guys is going to be higher. Um, they don't know anybody, they're not known, they just think they're going to get smashed. Um, might be, you know, you feel safe in your home gym environment, you know what everybody's level is, they know you, and going to a, a, an open map might be quite intimidating. So why, why do it? Um, it's, for me, it's the exposure to the other bodies and you're almost getting to know everybody else that's, that's in the scene. Like, good open mats are going to get good players and reputable players where you might necessarily get the chance to roll with them or even compete against them. So it'll be your chance to see where you're up to compared to them in a relaxed environment, provided that the that you sort of introduce yourself in that manner as opposed to going in kind of like going and walk around like you're the big man, chest puff proud and not really being polite with the rest of the gym. Um but no, it's it's all about the exposure and the chance to test yourself against other players. And it lets you see if your game plan works. Because like you said, everybody in the gym in your gym knows you. Yeah. So they're gonna they can game plan against that and not not let you get to certain positions, not let you get to certain techniques, and it just becomes a very stagnant role after a while. Whereas against new players, you can be like okay, this never works against people in the gym, but that's because they're expecting you. Whereas try against someone who doesn't know you that well, 
you can push the pace and you can try the new things and almost, yeah, just sort of see if everything works in a new scenario. Yeah, it's not quite as, you know, it's not competition day, but it's definitely a step up from going into your, your sparring mat at your regular gym. You know, yeah. Like, like that, sparring, you know, you can have a bit of a laugh at an open mat and I always have a laugh at an open mat, but there's a slightly more serious tone to it as well. Oh, uh, yeah. Is, you know, especially if you don't know the people that you're rolling with, uh, there's, there's a bit of an expectation there. Like you were saying, that story about being in Iceland before as well, it's like, is he not good? Like, what sort of game do I put on this? <laughs> um, so it's definitely a step up from regular sparring sessions, but some a step in between that and competing. It's probably a good stepping stone for people who want to compete. Like, yeah, you see competitions easy anyway, isn't it? It's, you know, it's pretty pretty straightforward for most people to just turn up to a, a competition at white belt and kind of feel comfortable because of the process of it. But if you feel uncomfortable about that, maybe you can go into a, an open map might be a step towards getting used to competing um, without that like pressure of competition day and having yeah. to wait and, and all that sort of stuff beyond the mat at the right sort of time or whatever. Um, but yeah, like I said, you know, an opportunity to just test your ideas against somebody who doesn't see them on a on a daily basis. And the other thing as well is like seeing what they can offer back against the door. You know, like somebody in your gym might not have a good defense for a technique that you've got and you just keep slamming it on all the time it's like great i can do that all the time but then you come up against somebody who trains at a gym where that's a common technique and everyone in the gym's got a defense for it and now your technique doesn't work and you need to yeah and that's going to be a good eye opener for you as well um, oh definitely it helps you like you say with that thing about the stepping stone to competition there's always that um element of stranger danger when you're going against someone that you don't know and it gets, it tries to minimise or at least adjust to that anxiety around that, um, which only really gets easier and better with practice as opposed to just jumping in blind with it. Yeah, I mean, the one thing that I would say about going to open mats that's different to comps as well is that starting intensity for most people in a match is going to be a lot lower. You know, like in competition, you might just get a ball rush straight away from somebody with a lot of nervous energy. Yeah. Uh, and just come hot out the gates. Whereas at an open mat, for the most part, it's going to be over, overly relaxed. Certainly yeah. within those couple of rounds, everyone's going to be like super polite and soft and, and nice and touchy feeling with it. And then only once you've been fucking each other up for the first five rounds and everyone's got a good sweat on, then the intensity is up. Um, but yeah, it is, it is a good stepping stone, and just to get you out of your comfort zone, if you if you're a bit anxious with um, putting yourself out there and getting outside of your comfort zone of your home gym. Mm. No, definitely. Um, what are the, do you have any sort of like um, key takeaways you get when you go to an open mat? Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, it, again, it's going to be just reiterating what we've just gone over, really. But going there with a bit of a a purpose and having something that you want to test out and, and see if it works, but also be willing to be open to seeing what's going on on the mat as well. Especially if you're uh, a newer guy in the sport and, you know, you might be like a white or a blue belt going to an open mat where these like brown belts and black belts and you've not rolled with them before. Looking at the sort of intensity that they put on in their rounds and seeing actually, is it more relaxed? Is it more intense? Like, how are the top, how are the higher level guys playing different from what you're doing? Um, and just seeing the, the difference on the energies. Because sometimes at an open mic, you might be sat out um, on a round, you know, if these, if these odd bodies. And that's a really good opportunity, like we talked about before, to sit back and look at what's going on. You can learn as much from watching as you can from doing. Um, yeah. You know, especially if you've already got a, a good fundamental concept of how Jiu Jitsu works. And you can translate that in your brain. It's a great opportunity to sit back and watch. Uh, but for me, stuff I've taken away from open maps is like if I know, uh, you know, like let's say for example, if I came to an open map and you know we didn't know each other really well, but I knew you were good at leg locks, um, I'm going to try and potentially get into a position where I can learn something from you doing the leg locks. Mm. Uh, even if I'm not expressly saying to you at the beginning, like, oh, yeah, so I, uh, nice to meet you, mate. I know you've got really good leg locks to mind, like, if we get into that situation a bit. But I'm going to try and take something away that I know that I can learn from you. Yeah. Or if you've got really good wrestling, 
and you know that they've got good wrestling, maybe take more of an opportunity to try and disengage from being on the ground and stand up with them. Um, but again, that goes to turn up to more open mats and being more familiar with people in the scene to know what they offer. Um, because people aren't always necessarily going to come out with that on an open map because of the not stranger danger, but not necessarily knowing what you're looking for from around. Uh, and then, of course, you always see when you know it's sort of people that are turning up to open mats frequently. Like there's always the same guys that travel around to lots of different gyms doing open mats. Um, that usually just ends up turning into a good scrap. So, yeah, yeah. You always there's always a good opportunity to just kind of watch um, some. I kind of like. I dream matchups really, and there are open mats which you might not get the chance to see in um, competition, or if they've competed against each other and they and they're after the win, they might play a bit more conservatively. But in an open mat, it's a bit more playful. There's less stress, and end up being some of the better rounds during an open mat. So if you are that extra body and you're sort of sat watching, there's going to be some really good matchups um, during an open map that you can sit there and yeah. quite happily watch for entertainment. I mean, for me as well, I always look at training as you spend no more time training in jiu-jitsu than you do competing. And I want my training to be as, yeah. as developmental as possible. Of course, you always learn a lot of lessons from competing, whether you take a win or you take a loss. But like, for most people, 90 to 99% of the training uh, of their jiu-jitsu happens in training so you may as well make that as fun as possible and whether that's going to compete against the highest level guys in an open mat if you're not lucky enough to have that in your home gym um, you know, take every advantage that you've got take every opportunity that you've got because that's how you're going to spend most of your time like if you're too focused on worrying about that small percentage of your time being on competition unless you've got aspirations of being a really high level competitor and you are going to be competing pretty much every weekend, it's going to be a very low percentage of what you're actually doing. So make the most out of those opportunities. You might be able to get to an open mat every weekend, um, whereas you might only be competing three or four times a year. Um, and you can make an open mat as fun or as enjoyable to go to and almost learn more from them because you're doing them more frequently than the three or four times a year that you might end up competing. Yeah, definitely. And like you said, the there's bigger opportunities to learn at open mats than there are at competitions as well. So, like, go there armed with questions. If you and if you see something that you, that's good at something that you want to learn about, like you said with the leg locks, you'd try and get around with somebody. But then also ask them the questions. They may not answer the questions if they if they're not that if they're not that way inclined. But you're still going to take something away from them in, in how they do something to you or how they um, get an entry into a certain submission. Any any small detail you can take away. I mean, I think as well from, and it's true for anything, but like just turn up to more. Like if you, you know, you turn up to your first open mat and it's, you know, nobody's going to know you. Like they're not going to be willing to necessarily roll with you as much because they don't know you. They've not seen your face. But just turn up week in, week out. Uh, any opportunity you get to go to one, you'll see the same guys that are going. They're going to be more open to rolling with you. You're going to be more open to having a chat if they actually train with you. Um, you know, if they train with you three or four times, maybe you can ask them about, you know, sort of techniques and maybe they can show you something in a round rather than just having a scrap for a round. Um, so, like, my advice for people doing that would just be turn up to as many as you can. I know it's not going at the moment, but when it's back to normal, if you can do one every weekend or every other weekend, do it. Yeah, definitely. And like you say, just turn it up to them, you're going to develop that network where when there are the more sort of closed door open mats or opportunities to train with the sort of more experienced players or more seasoned competitors who are looking for uh, sort of extra, extra bodies for their training camps, you may get the invite or, extent, or the invitation to come and contribute to those um, training camps or be the, be the extra body if you're known by if you're known throughout for the open mat scene um so it's not just like about turning up for training as well there's going to be opportunities that will arise through turning up for open mats as opposed to just competitions yeah and if you def if you if competing is something that you want to do i think open mats are a necessity um, yeah you know just even, even if it is a case of getting to know the people who you're going to be competing against more likely than not 
every, everyone who's competing at the kind of higher level in the brackets are pretty much all going to open mats. So if you want to get an understanding of what the level is going to be when you're going to compete, you're going to be on the mats at the open mats. You'll have a very good idea about going there. Yeah, definitely. You can even t treat an open mat like a uh, uh, competition where you're going to have the um, different levels of players. You'll have strategies for different ta uh, for roles and almost treat it like this is the first round, this is the second round, this is the third round, quarter, semis, final, and just sort of treat each role in that regard to give you get yourself in that mindset. I'm just thinking about what a horrible tournament it'd be if I went to like uh, a, a tournament that was like an open mat that I've been to. Where it's like 15 rounds in a row with a 45 second break in between. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be more of a cardio test than a, a tournament of skill. <laughs> yeah, be a certain resilient me mental resilience test as well. Like get into that, get into that 10th round. You kind of like, uh, I'm, I'm going to sit this one out. Oh no, I can't. It's the final. Oh no. <laughs> That's another good thing as well. Actually, that's a good bit of advice. Don't go to open mats and sit out like if you don't need to. I see plenty mm. of people like taking it easy on themselves. You can get in there. Like it's 10 rounds. Stop being a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just dig in and bear with it. Like you, you, you're going to be done for the day. And most open mats occur in the morning. Like you've got the rest of the day to recover and rest. Yeah. And the other thing that is actually like, you see this a fair bit as well. You know, people turning up to open mats with other people from the gym, and you might roll with those three people out of your ten possible rounds. You're going to roll three times with the same guys that you roll with week in week out. I get, I get maybe the first round where you sort of like, okay, I want to warm up, so I'm going to roll with people that I know because we know our intensity. But then after that, don't look at the people that you train with regularly. Like, get to as many different rounds as you can. I think I remember the last open mat that I went to with you. We might got around in a little bit later on in the session, but I just remember looking over to you or coming coming over to you after a, uh, a round in between. It's like just got fucking mauled. <laughs> <laughs> the interaction that we had in between, but it was funny. Um, <laughs> yeah, a lot of people just like kind of stick in the bubble. The reason that you're going there is to get out of your comfort zone. So. And I get it, like, people are nervous, aren't they, if they don't know people, and you may be going there with a couple of people, but, like, you know, like saying, nobody gives a, nobody gives a shit in jiu-jitsu, everyone's just there to roll, they don't really care what level they, they are, if they're better than you, you're going to turn the level down, um, you know, if you come in and provide a, a good role for them, then, you know, people are going to be happy for that, like, everyone wants a better role, everyone wants a better round than to be tested, so if they don't know you and it turns out that you're a good role and you can provide a good challenge, great, you're going to get the opportunity to roll with them more. That's it. And like, like I say, it's just all about expanding your horizons when you turn up to open mats. I, mean, I was going to say something there, it's completely slipped off the tip of my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was I going to say? It'll come back to me when we stop recording. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, on, on that, like, I can't really think of anything more to add to the subject on that. We've kind of, it's, we're driving home the same message um, and it's just sort of expand who you roll with, um, be open to the new challenges, get to know different players as well. Like every different player's got a different perspective on the same technique. So there's always going to be different details you can take away, even if it's the same technique, like there's going to be a different thing you can take away from each player. Yeah, you'll see as well, a lot of open mats, especially people that have a particular style, don't they? Like, you might go to an open mat where it's, like, very leg lock dominant. Mm. Or there'll be a different open mat that's, like, very resting focused. Um, and it just depends kind of who's there on the day. So, you know, going to different ones and getting that different opportunities. You know, we're kind of just repeating the same stuff, aren't we? Just, like, get, get out to more. Get, get the opportunity as much as you can and learn as much as you can. Be humble. Don't go in with, a, with an attitude that you, you're either the best in the room or, and also, don't go in with the attitude that you can't provide any insight if you think that you're a little bit less experienced because mm. that player that you're coming against is maybe a bit more experienced. You know, everybody learns off everybody. So even as a lower experienced guy, you can you, the, the guys who you roll with are always going to take something away from rolling with you. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I, like I say, if you've got any questions or any other input, drop them down in the comments. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe button and share button, let everybody know. Um, 
you've got any questions you want us to answer or any subjects you want us to cover, drop us a message, uh, comment below in the comment section and yeah, give us a bit of feedback, let us know what you think. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back to open maps probably as much as everybody else is. So uh, when they're all going again, we can light up the comments and inboxes and get everybody on board and fired up for one of those 200 person roles the first opportunity back. Uh, 100%. Yeah, definitely, we'll, we'll see you all on the maps. <laughs> uh, hit us up at the Grapplers Academy, uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, uh, the Bonafide PT at Coach by Si as well. Um, and yeah, we'll see you next week.